One thing I love about the AI data center boom is that it just keeps creating winners in unexpected places. Take Jacob Solutions. It's the engineering construction firm that went through a complicated merger breakup deal last year that was very successful, but is now cleaning up thanks in large part to its data center exposure, which has become a major growth driver for the company. Don't take it from me, though. Let's check in with Bob Bricard. He's the chairman and CEO of Jacob Solutions. Lamar, Mr. Bricard, and welcome back to Mad Money. Jim, always great to be here. Thank okay, you. Okay, so, Bob, it turns out that what you're doing is exactly what I wanted our viewers to hear about. Uh, first, let's just talk about data center, and then let's talk about digital twin. Okay. okay, but this data center business falling in your lap. You're one of the few companies that can build them. It, we are, we are. So Jim, we've been in that uh, that space since back in 2007. Okay. So in the advent of data storage and the requirement for a data center, we started doing uh, the design around what we used to call the white space, the server room, the gray space, the utility area. But then there were conventional data centers, so we hook them into the grid, right. hook them into the municipal water uh, supply, and uh, and that would be it. Today. It's a big difference. And we're now into the AI data center, which is, uh, is really a complex facility right down our wheelhouse. But I was going to say, not only is it complex, but and we've been to one of them, that I, I have a belief that if you haven't had the experience, it's too risky for the company to hire you. It is tough. There's a bit of a moat that's right. around that as well. And the, the fact that we've been in complex facilities, whether it be in the semiconductor world, life sciences, that's kind of in our DNA. Right. So well, the history in the data centers coupled with that complex facility. Experience. And I, will, I want people to know at home that when we saw you last, we, you were talking about a breakup. And I was worried because there's a lot of pressure and a lot of breakups, but yours came through terrifically. It really did. And the new company, Amentum, right. is, uh, is doing well. But we've been separated now since September a year ago. Right. Uh, and out of our retained stake back in March. Uh, and, and they've been doing well, we've been doing well, and, and continue to grow. Sensational. Now, I happen to be reading a, uh, you know, a, I guess you call it a press release from, from NVIDIA. I always like to see, I love it when I see uh, Madison Wong writing the press release. Yes, that's, that is Jens, Jensen's daughter. But it's about the idea of optimizing the data center using the digital twin. Now, we've used that term, and I've, Jensen has shown it, but I think that since you're the actual builder, you can tell us the value of the digital twin. Yeah, absolutely. It, it takes what used to be a disparate area. So you had the compute load, what the power requirement would, would need to be, and then the facility to support the entirety of the, uh, of the, of the system. Today, it's gotten pretty complicated. So as the compute load is innovating at a very rapid pace, what NVIDIA, NVIDIA has asked us to do is be the design integrator and, and look at that from a systematic perspective. So we did the reference design for a, a giga plus, right. a gigawatt plus uh, facility, and then we did a digital twin. So now you can simulate in the virtual space what's happening with compute load, the effect that it has on the utility requirements, and then longer term, how do you operate something like that? Okay, so I think people at home will say, well, what does it save? I mean, so what? A digital twin. I mean, are these buildings so hard to do that maybe there's construction changes? And I think you have to tell us why a digital twin can save money for the customer. You're working out in the simulated model, in the virtual space, the nuances of what's happening with rack power, the need for liquid cooling potentially the need for liquid cooling and air cooling, and then where's the power coming from, as well as the water requirements for all that cooling. So this is now taking what used to be a data center, still is, right. and turning it into an AI factory, and then the support infrastructure that's needed for that, all within the virtual space. Because the innovation that NVIDIA is doing right now on the, on the chip design it's going at a very, as you know, Jim, sure. at a very rapid pace. All right, so Bob, here's something that I, I am trying to figure out. How do they hook them up to the grid? If they're such big, if they're, they're just these monsters that want all the electricity, do you do that, and how do you be, how do you be sure that there's enough power? So we will design the requirements for, okay. for, for the power needs within the data center, and then we will look at, okay, there's a couple of different options. Sometimes in some locations, West Texas, Montana, the grid can handle it. There's other places where it can't, so you go into alternate sources of power behind the meter. Like nuclear power? Uh, like nuclear power, like, like LNG, uh, like on-premise 
uh, LNG Look combined cycle gas. power in uh, in in. And this is storage. something you like when you go down. Do you say, oh boy, it looks like we have to tap into some grid part of the grid that no one ever thought of, or we have to root it away from everybody else to us? And maybe there's a an equity issue. Maybe some of the other people get mad at you who are customers. It, it, they, they could. They right. could. I think what's really, really important is that determination of can the grid handle it, right? Or do you have on, what they call on-premise power, and then during peak loads, depending on the source, right. the use of batteries and batteries. That's storage. what I hear that that's really taken over. It is. It is. Wow. So it's it's the it's it's the complexity that I was talking about earlier, right. where we're right in the middle of all. But of that. the complexity is not a problem for you. For instance, in the GOP-1 drugs, those are complex. I'm sure the buildings are complex, but that's something that you're now used to. We're we're and, and we were right there with those GOP-1 manufacturers. Yes, you were. From the beginning, when the formulation was at bench scale, going to commercial scale, to determine what the facility requirements would need to be. Well, I mean, I, I just think that maybe the next generation of what they're working on is could be yours too. It, it could be in tableting form. It, yes, it, it could be, and that could be really, really We think really a exciting. tablet form could be big, and we know that therefore you don't have to refrigerate it. And it could be uh, one of those things where people don't like to give themselves needles. I would like to think that they are ready if they if they do pass the test. It, it, absolutely, and Jim. There's another dynamic that's happening in that space. It's other companies besides the two we've always talked about that are now coming in with their own molecule. So that, that, that ecosystem of, of producers is now expanding. Well, I understand that there's plenty of room for everybody. That's Absolutely. always, even David Ricks from Eli Lilly would tell us that. Well, I want to thank Bob Regatta. He's the chairman and CEO of Jacob Solution, which has been a total winning stock. And you just heard, they really understand how to build these factories, which are so difficult to do. Mad Money's back after the break.